All right, Outlaw Radio Live fans, we are live on the air with none other than Cali Pitts, also known as Young Prodigy from the South Central Cartel. How you doing tonight? What's good with you, fam? I'm great. No complaints. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing really good. And I have to ask you, man, what made you decide to get into the music industry? Um, well, as you know, Big Prodigy being my older brother, it was already put in my face for seeing it and um, being influenced by it. I just have a genuine love for music. No matter what genre it is, I pretty much like all music, so it's just in me. And I have to also ask, man, you work with MC8 and, um, sorry, MC8 of Compton's Most Wanted on the album Death Threats. Um, I have to ask, man, what was it like working with the legendary MC8? I mean, it's one of the moments in my career that I always cherish, you know, for MC8 to actually come and get me personally to get on his album. That's like a big milestone in my career, even as a young guy. So it's always one of my most cherished moments. It was, it was, man, it was just dope. It was dope. That's all I can say about it. It was dope. I heard he's one of the most hardest workers actually in, in the booth as well, man. I mean, yeah, you can see it to this day. You know, eight is constantly on the move, constantly on tour, constantly doing this thing. So, you know what I'm saying? When it's in you, it's in you. It ain't something you got to fake. So, you know, he's just doing what he do. That's true, man. And also, you were a member of a legendary rap group, South Central Cartel. I have to ask you, how did you and the other members initially get connected? Well, um, as you know, Big Prodigy is my actual older brother. Havoc the Rhyme son is my actual first cousin. And that's my mother's brother's son. Um, Havoc the Mouthpiece, he was in a relationship with my sister for about 20 years. So it's pretty much family. LV, um, same neighborhood, saw me grow up from probably, i say, when I was in the second grade on up. So he's been knowing me pretty much my whole life. Chaos and Grip, been knowing my family before I was even born. So everything about the South Central Cartel was family-oriented. Oh, nice, man. That's what's up, man. So that's pretty cool. I never knew it was actually like a family. Before I started getting into this whole music industry, I figured it was like a rap, big rap group, man. So, like, I'm learning as I go along, man. That's that's extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, and like I say, some of us not, you know, actually related, but it's it's so, the connection is goes so far back. It's like, that's not my friend. That's my brother. You know what I mean? And you were also featured on the Def Jam soundtrack for the show. And collaborating with like legendary artists, uh, the Dog Pound and Ice T, among others. I have to ask you, what was it like doing that project, and how did that uh, record deal with Def Jam, Def Jam, come to be for you guys? Well, for us, well, it's like this: if they, if, if people know their history with the South Central Cartel, um, Young Prodigy wasn't originally supposed to be a member of South Central Cartel. I was always a solo artist that had my own situations going on. You know, I had my own solo deal on Def Jam. I had a, uh, another deal on Def Jam as the evil side with me and uh, my partner, Skeen. Um, and I also, you know, had the South Central Cartel situation. What happened with that is that um, I was just, you know, Back in the days, it was good the fact, if you had somebody to bounce bounce your your uh, introduction off of. I think that's what Russell was planning on doing, bouncing me off of the fact that South Central Cartel came out. That when when they when I was on a song with them, it showed that you know okay, this is the next thing coming. But the vibe was so good with South Central Cartel when it came in at a situation where Big Pride was. Um, pretty much the only one holding down the staple that I was able to slide right up in there and keep it going with him because I was already so much embedded with the South Central Cartel from 92 on until now. That's crazy, man. I also have to uh, ask this, man. So this is one of my favorite albums that you have ever did, and it's Young Prodigy, the Diablo Flame On movie on Wax. I have to ask, man. Um, how did that legendary uh, record come to be, man? And and are, is it still available for purchase on the internet? Yes, it's definitely available for purchase. Um, you go on the internet, find it under Hood Good Records. We have um, we, we we it's the actual re-release because you know as this game went on, we got a hold of a lot of our own material and we we are putting it back out there through our own companies. But um, that album came to be just by. Um, 
it was after the Def Jam. Um, I was on Def Jam for a few years. Things had went kind of sour, I say. Um, and I had got another deal with uh, Vital Sounds. I think it was RCA Vital Sounds or whatever. And um, that was just that that album was me given what I felt like where I was at right th- at the moment. I was I was in an angry place, you know what I mean? Because the Def Jam thing didn't work, and I was moving on without getting my 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 my, uh, my rightful due with that with that deal with that situation. So the movie on Wax, it was just me using my artistic brain to understand what the things that I was going through in the streets. It's so it, that should be so crazy. It'd be like a movie, and a lot of dudes can uh, vouch for that. To where we go through so much shit, we just sit back and realize that damn, nigga, my life is pretty much like a movie. So I just threw that into an album, man, and and, and, and collab with everybody that was in the clique, all the young coming uppers in our clique, which was the Young Murder Squad, Droop, uh, In the Cut, um, the Evil Side. Um, you know everybody, so I just I just went in with my crew and just you know we, that's what we came out with Diablo Flame on movie on wax. And I also have to ask, when you work with the legendary Murder Squad as well, how did you guys initially get hooked up with the Murder Squad? The Murder Squad or the Young Murder Squad? Oh, uh, the Young Murder Squad, sorry. Well, the Young Murder Squad been pretty much my childhood friends. You know what I mean? We uh been hanging since pretty much the fourth fifth grade. Um, with D and Wayne, I've been knowing them since we was in like the fourth, fifth grade, junior high school, no, elementary school together. And, um, you know, we was always doing the same thing. They rapped, I rapped. So as being close friends and doing the same thing, it was only just, it was pretty much, um, automatic that it came to be, but the young murder squad came to be when young money came to the table being, he was my high school friend from the East side of LA and, you know, it was like my West Side homeboys and my East Side homeboy, they came together. And that's how you got the Young Murder Squad, which is just one of the most underrated rap groups from the West Coast. They don't get they just do of that album they did was a classic album. But that's how I became um, collabing with the Young Murder Squad. They, they my brothers. They again, you know, what I'm saying people I've been doing for my whole life. So, you know, what I mean, it's just automatic when we do what we do. And you were also part of one of the biggest supergroups on the West Coast called California Organization. I have to ask, how did you become a member of such a huge, huge group? How did that formation come to be? See, it's like, honestly, I'm going to be 100 with you. I ain't never heard of that in my life, bro. So when you be seeing people use people names or, you know what I'm saying, or... Um, you know, it ain't always verified and vouched that that's the artist is actually doing that they self because it's so much pirate in the music still in that go on in this mute in this business nowadays. Unless you're talking about a certain album we put out, and you might have it confused with it being a, a click and over just more of being a compilation. Uh, yeah, it was like a compilation record uh, called California. It was with by like, Compton's Most Wanted. Um... And with some of the uh, South Central Cartel members. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about, bro. Yeah, I mean, that. see, that's just networking. Big Pride, my brother, he deal with a lot of people, and he friends with a lot of people. And you know what I mean? When, when, when See, sometimes I might not know who you're talking about or what you're talking about, but now you jug my memory. So now it's just sometimes my brother will come to me and tell me, you know what I mean, to, to, it, it's beneficial to, to look out for a person or, you know what I'm saying, they good people look out for them. So if if you hear me on certain things that it's it's probably pretty much like that. Like, you know, I looked out for somebody or I, I just laced the track because they was good people. Oh yeah, most definitely. It's just, you know, honestly, people like yourself have done so much in the, so much in the industry as well that, you know, some days you might just sit back and be like, oh, I don't remember, you know, you got, you did so much, man. I mean, yeah, I, I pre- and it's, it's like what you call so much. I, I say it ain't enough. That's why I got my new music, everything new coming. Um, a lot of people wonder why I changed my name to Young Pride. I mean, from Young Pride to Cali Pitts, I didn't change my name. I'm always going to be Young Pride. Cali Pitts is just a you know a new way to express myself in different ways. You know what I mean? It's just that other identity that I have that that speak in a different tone sometimes. You know. And also, but you. I'm and a constant, Sorry about that, sorry. No, you can go. Okay, I was going to say, and also speaking of like your new projects and whatnot as well, you also just recently got back from a tour of Japan. 
uh, called the Paper Run Tour, man. I have to ask, what is what was Japan like versus North America, and how how did that tour go? I mean, the tour was lovely, man. We got a lot of footage online, man. A lot of our fans are still discussing that tour to this day. They still posting pictures and, and showing their appreciation for the South Central Cartel coming out there and putting it down. Man, like always, you know, that's not my first run in Japan, but Japan is a beautiful country, and, and, and I'm, I'm always blessed to go there. And any opportunity I have, you know, I, I take it. Actually, I'm going to be back out there in May. I'm actually doing a tour uh with me, with Young Prodigy and the Young Murder Squad, we going out there and doing a Japan tour. So, you know, like I said, it's always a blessing when someone can uh, um, appreciate you enough to, you know, uh, you come down to their country, perform and, and, and rock the stage, do what you love to do, do what you do, just like breathing. Like, you know, when I do this music, it's like breathing, man, it's easy to me. So when someone is uh, 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 appreciate me enough to where, they want me to come to their country and represent. Man, it's always a blessing. Japan is a beautiful place. And also, March of last year, you were a part of Smoke One With Me Volume One with some with some tons of legendary individuals. I have to ask, what was that experience like, and where can our listeners buy or stream it? Well, um, Smoke One With Me, well, pretty much, it should be on all social uh, all social media platforms. You know what I mean? You should be able to find it, man. Um, Spotify. Apple Music, you should be able to find it everywhere, man. Um, just go, just go Google it. If, if, if a fan is truly real about it, they gonna find it. It's easy to find music nowadays. All you gotta do is put it in that search key, and, and you can find it. But like always, when I'm doing anything, man, if I'm on it, then I mean that's something I took pride in and I appreciated. I respected the people who I was doing it with, you know. So. Pretty much, you can always answer questions for yourself when it comes to Young Pride. When you hear me on anything, it's because obviously them people were solid. You know what I mean? And I respect them. You know, and I respect the music because there's a lot of people I turn down. Not because I have a hatred for what they doing. It's just some. It's, it's I'm I'm too far in this game where I waste my time. I will, I, I choose not to waste my time on things that ain't, that's not gonna have a purpose. And that's completely understandable, man. Like you, you and the rest of the South Central Cartel have paved the way for a lot of West Coast individuals, man. So I don't blame you. You know, you've you've earned that right to actually have that type of attitude, man. You know what? It's a good attitude to have, especially in this music industry. Yeah, because you can oversaturate yourself just doing anything. With, with, and my problem be is that you know a lot of people do music nowadays, and they don't really they they. Just because you're able to do music don't mean you're an actual artist in this game working. Like they don't they don't file paperwork for companies. They don't they're not getting their LCs up with, with 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 really doing this business and they just put it out there. So if you just put it out there and you're not registering this song with ASCAP or BMI so I can get my money, my residuals because I'm really a businessman with my music, then it's a waste of my time. So I pr- I prefer to uh, work with artists that are you know, mentally equipped with their business or they have record deals because it's easier when the artists have a record deal, the paperwork gonna get done. And that is when these people, when a lot of when a lot of these artists independent, they don't have paperwork to get done and they don't even contact you asking you what's your uh, a publishing company because they have no intentions on even putting it out in a real way. But they still put your music out there with they music out there with your voice on it, promoting it to the world. As, as they get more famous or they might uh, 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 benefit off of the uh, off the streams they get but you know it, it, it don't it don't keep the business going it's just it's just a, a one-way lane with a lot of these artists and I don't choose to deal with them that's completely true man it really is um also on March 7th 2019 you did an event called from the ground up tour uh, with uh, devoted to the streets. Um, also known as Young D from the Young Murder Squad. I have to ask you, man, what was it uh, like doing that tour, and what was it like touring with Young D? Well, anytime I get to uh, spend time with my brothers and, and, and my true friends, it's always a good time. I mean, that tour was, you know, it was the success it was. It was to, to, to notify people that Young D from the Young Murder Squad and Young Pride from the South Central Cartel, we, we still out here doing our thing, and, and you know what I mean? We, we was there to put on performances so, you know, our fan base can get to us and see us, you know what I mean? That was a, um, a self-funded tour, you 
You know what I mean? DB has put that together. Young D put that together, and we just went out there and did what we did, man. Hey, man, most definitely. And you also uh, did a did a song with him recently as well on uh, DJ Alec. Uh, sorry, DJ Alex Funk, Gangsta Funk 2. It's actually a Germany album as well. Um, I have to ask you, man, what was it like doing that album and doing the song L.A.? Well, you know what? It's, it's crazy, man, because it turned out that, you know, Alex Funk, he's a, he's a true brother, man. He's, he's, a, he's a real cool dude. And I, and I didn't previously know him, and he just hit me up, you know what I mean, off the fact of being a fan. You know what I mean? And in, in these day and ages, in, in the way he hit me up made me respect what he was doing. That's why, you know what I mean? I went and got Young D. I gave it out from the Young Murder Squad. I felt like I was giving him more than he was even asking for. But the fact that he hit me up and asked me how much would I charge, he didn't hit me up just expecting me to do it for free. He didn't hit me up uh, not not looking at this as this, as this being my um, form of occupation to, to survive and eat off of. He, he hit me up knowing... Like, man, you know how much it's going to cost me. So when I got with Dude and I did that off top, he's just the producer of the track. So he sent me a dope track, man, and it was nothing. Like I said, when people good people, I return that favor with a rap eat any day because I do it so easily. And, you know, that is love, man. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people really actually would be like how much you charge. They expect some free stuff nowadays, man. So just by the sounds of that, he sounds like a really cool and also most definitely a real individual. I mean, for one, like I said, at least he understand he's in the business and not a game. You know, I don't call it the rap game. I call it the rap business. You know, it's the music business for me, not the music game. Or you know what I mean? Because if you put it, if you call it a game, that's how you gonna handle your business like a game. But if you always, if you call it a business, you put in that perspective in your head that you're in the business and you always conduct yourself as such. And that's true, man. That really is. And speaking of business, man, um, November 23rd, 2019, you actually launched your own podcast called The Social Talk. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Uh, what What do you do on the podcast, and where can our listeners actually tap in and check you out? Well, right now, it's on all social uh podcast platforms but if you really want to just find social talk go to spotify you know uh type in social talk and it'll pop up right there for you but social talk is social talk to me is like my my thing that i say uh we come in from a perspective where two where people is too high where most people is too high to see from which means it's like it's like a voice for the the the, the, the downtrodden to have not the perspective of view that you know a lot of these artists are, are intelligent guys, but they 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 genre of music is called gangster rap, which which make a lot of people not pay attention to them. And if you can give some of these intelligent dudes the platform to just speak in conversation, we can learn so much from them. So I started the podcast just for, just for that point in itself for independent artists for for um, ex gang members, um, small business owners. Whoever need a voice to just speak their intelligence out to the world to, to try to change the perspective. You know what I mean? Because people have too many perspectives on, oh, he gangster rap, or he from L.A., and, or, you know, it, it's, it's, it's such a bad um, judgment, you know, so... I, I just wanted to give something where people to just speak out real and I asked them about politics, things that, you know, most rappers don't get asked, especially um, underground rappers. They don't get asked things about politics or what kind of um, charities that they are into or what's their mission beyond just rapping. And if they did get rich, what kind of uh, things they're, they're going to do with the finances that, you know, their fans gave to them. And you, you know, know what I mean? that actually just, sounds like a really good platform, man. I think most definitely that like, everybody should tap into that, man. I actually like the sounds of that. Yeah, I mean, for one, like I say, uh, if, 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 if we want to save the game that we in, that we do, this entertainment, you know, or we want to make sure it got real substance to it, then it's on us to bring it. You know, whether you're rapping, whether you got a radio show, whether you got a podcast, if you if you if you seeking substance and you can't find it, then you bring it yourself. That's true. Sometimes the best things to do are just, sometimes the best things you got to do is do it yourself. Yeah, facts. 
So, also in 2019, South Central Cartel released an album called The Camp. I have to ask, what is the inspiration behind that, and where can our listeners stream or buy themselves a hard copy if you guys offer them? Well, if you want to buy hard copies, all you got to do is hit Big Pride up, or you hit me up, and we'll get them hard copies out directly to you, because once again, we're an independent company, self-funded, so we do everything in-house ourselves, um, you know, but we got... Uh, legitimate actual hard copies for sale for those that want them and just just the camp the camp is pretty much a um a throwback to the 90s it, it's an embodiment of all the work we we put in it's, it's a couple of songs from um you know young murder squad a couple of songs from the evil side a couple of songs from young prize south central cartel it's our camp it's some songs from the uh the og murder squad so basically it's it's a it's a um, a body of work that our camp you know indiv- the, the individual groups from our camp um did over the years that never was released so it's pretty much unreleased music from you know the south central cartel young murder squad young pride things like that and also recently you did a song called jump out with doe fresh the dawn from black law rebel music i have to ask you what was it like working with doe fresh the dawn man shit working with don is like a breath of fresh air like like, you know what i'm saying when 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 i fuck with rappers that who like rap skill is the quality that i appreciate that i respect not just the fact that you rap you can talk about trap and get money but that you got that hip-hop spirit though fresh is one of them cats that got that 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 real rap spirit in and i and i love them actually we got to do more bro i actually got to do more with him because jump out is one of the dopest songs that i've done in a long time and like i said it got that real authentic hip-hop swag to it I think you guys should actually do a compilation album, man. Like, you guys just team up for an album. I think that would be freaking dope. Oh, uh, that'd be, I mean, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? I, like I said, when it comes to rap, that, that'd be done in 10 days. If we want to put an album out, me and Doe can do, you know what I mean? Shit, 10 days, we can have an album out, you know what I mean? Oh, that's, yeah, that's, man, you, you guys are both machines in the studio. No, I mean, just, I, shit, man, just don't know. You, you have no clue, bro. I got thousands and thousands of songs, man. And I also have to ask you, man, um, what's next for Cali Pitts? Um, any new shows, any new albums, anything you want to let our listeners know about? Well, like I said, I'm about to go back to Japan and do a tour um, in May. Um, I'm working on an adult, uh, um, how would I explain this? I'm working on adult bedtime stories, a book for adult bedtime stories. Nothing provocative, but it's the the, the reading is a is a, a mature reading. You know what I mean? So I'm working on a new album that we're about to be dropping soon. As soon as we launch the Prodigy Project that me and Big Pride just did together, we're going to be launching that. And the first single off that would be Good Times. Um, but after that, we'll be dropping the Cali Pitts album. We'll be dropping the Young Pride album. We'll be uh, getting my book published and put out there. Um, you know, try to get some of these movies out right, man. Some of these sitcoms I done created, man. Try to get something on TV. That's my plan for 2020, man. Try to get some of these um, visuals that I create on TV or on the big screen. Hey, man, you know what it sounds like? 2020 is most definitely Young Prodigy's year. I mean, yeah, if I'm, I'm going to take it. You know, I'm going to make it my year. So I have to ask you, Kelly, this is the time in the interview that I give the individual that comes on my show a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, and also their social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and your journey if they're not already doing so. All right, y'all. I want to give a little advice before, you know, I say this, and it might be a little, you know, backwards, but people get off social media. Get the fuck off social media, get outside, go to some concerts, go buy some CDs, put them in your car, get on the highway and listen to real music in the real world, get to the real world. But if you want to find me, just Google me. Google Cali Pitts, Google Young Pride, and you're going to come up with all my social media. Simple as that. Hey, man, you know what? That's some great advice, honestly. I agree with that 110%. And as far as uh, shout outs, my people know who they are. The people I love know who they are. I don't really 
figure I got, feel like I, I got to shout nobody out that, you know what I mean, that don't already know. So, you know, everybody stay safe. That's what I do want to say. Hey, I wanted to say, Cali, thank you so much for coming up on LI Radio Live, man. I've been a fan of yours and the South Central Cartel for a very long time, so it's an absolute honor to be able to have you on my show. Thank you so much for coming up on the show, man. You most definitely have yourself a wonderful rest of your week. You too, bro, and no problem, man. Cartel represent for the real. Yeah, man, most definitely, man. You have yourself a wonderful night. All right, bless.